advertising and God. Many of us people of faith might not think that those two go together, but they do in the God campaign here in Austin these days. Stay tuned for Austin Faith Dialogue. Austin Faith Dialogue, at the crossroads of religion and life, a series highlighting the cultural and social interactions between the worshiping and religious communities in and around the capital city. Austin Faith Dialogue is brought to you by the Austin Metropolitan Ministries in cooperation with KXAN. Join us now in Austin Faith Dialogue. We're glad you've joined us today for Austin Faith Dialogue. I'm Sandy Wilder, your host, and today we're talking about the God Campaign, which you've probably seen on billboards around town. How did it get started, and what does it mean for us here in Austin? Our guest is Jonathan Edwards. You're one of the sales managers at Reagan National oh, Advertising. No, I am the sales, the manager. sales manager. There's only one, and it's me. Great. Then we have the right person here. So you, Reagan National Advertising is the company that has been actually putting up the billboards around town, right? That's correct, right. Now, tell us then a little bit about the company. What kind of business do you normally well, do? Well, we are uh, uh, an advertising, uh, an outdoor advertising company. We specialize in billboards, and we have in the Austin area, well, about 1,000 advertising faces. We have uh, 350 of the big bulletin faces and about uh, 650 of the smaller poster size faces. This is an unusual campaign, this that you call the God campaign. How was the company approached, and, and how did the company decide to do this campaign? Well, uh, this campaign uh, originally started in southern Florida. and There was a gentleman that uh, wished to remain anonymous that went to an advertising agency, uh, the Smith Agency, and says, gee, um, I'm concerned about uh, individuals' relationship with God, and I'd like to do something about this, and I want to try a little bit different approach to uh, reach individuals who don't normally go to church. And so they had a little brainstorming session and they came up with uh, uh, immediate use, which was uh, outdoor advertising, and they came up with some slogans. And uh, out of that meeting uh, arose a campaign with I think roughly uh, 18 different advertising messages. And the advertising messages ran in the Miami area for an undetermined time period. I, I really don't know how long they ran, but. Um, uh, the program was tremendously successful. Uh, and because of that, the success of the campaign was picked up by our trade organization, which is in Washington, D.C. Uh, the trade organization represents, oh, about 100 uh, outdoor companies around the United States. And they canvassed us and they said, hey, do you guys, here's the campaign. What do you guys think of it? Do you have any interest in, in doing the campaign? Uh, the response was uh, very positive and so the campaign began on a national basis, which I'm sure had to be thrilling for the uh, as yet unknown individual who originally came up with the campaign. I might say that, that the campaign ran uh, in southern Florida and this gentleman paid for this to run uh, out of his own pocket uh, in, in whatever market it was that it ran in. So it, uh, a unique campaign to be sure. Can you talk a little bit about the purpose of the campaign? What what did the originator want well, to Well, what happen? he wanted to do was he wanted to stimulate thought and he wanted to get people thinking about their relationship with God. And the messages that they designed were of a uh, non-denominational uh, nature and they were intended to be uh, thought-provoking uh, and humorous and witty. Uh, and the thought there was that, okay, if we, if we say something that's not threatening and kind of generic, uh, and we do it in an interesting way, maybe this will get people thinking about their relationship with God. And, of course, I'm sure this individual's ultimate purpose was to kind of raise church attendance a little bit. And it's my understanding that it did exactly that in uh, the market that it ran in. As we're talking about these messages, we, we've referred to them, but we've not seen any yet. I know we've got some of them uh, that we can roll on camera just to give people an idea of the kinds of things that have been developed in, in the campaign. So right. let's, let's take a look at those, and uh, maybe you can point out some of right. them. Right. I don't know how many of these. Uh, this is actually a photo of uh, one of the boards, but this is one of the messages, and it says, What part of thou shalt not didn't you understand? And that is one of the... 18 different messages that uh, was originated uh, in this campaign. I have a few others here that we can talk about. Uh, let's meet at my house Sunday before the game. God. Ah, there's a few of them. Uh, come on over and bring the kids. 
God, we need to talk. God, I love you, I love you, I love you. God, follow me. God, and there's quite a few others. So the idea was that it was supposed to be fun and that it was uh, t intended to be thought-provoking. Now, we didn't run all of the messages in this market. Uh, it's a little difficult to coordinate uh, the, the message to run on, uh, the individual messages to run on the 40-some-odd boards that we had selected uh, to run the campaign on. And I think we ultimately selected on uh, ooh, about a half a dozen or so. Any particular criteria you used? None. It's just I, I read the messages and I thought, gee, that's fun. We'll try that one. <laughs> and, Since you're and, and, that, and that's about as scientific as for the whole thing. So uh, the messages are up, and uh, surprisingly enough, we got a lot of response off of it. Well, talk a little bit about that response. My guess is if you're advertising margarine, let's say, you don't necessarily get people calling in, but this is different. This is different, and I think this is one of the, one of the reasons why this campaign works so well is because it is what I would call a non-advertising message. And I think that uh, uh, when someone drives by the boards and they see the messages on the boards, the first thing that registers in their mind is, wait a minute, this is not an ad. What is this thing? And then and you take a look at it and you go, where did this come from? What is this? And it gets you to think. And so with the number of the boards that are around in the market uh, and the different messages, you know, the thought there is that, well, you drive down the street and all of a sudden there's another one and you go, Oh, there's another one of those boards. What is this stuff? And you read the next one and you go, I don't believe this. Who's responsible for this? You know, and, 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 that, and that's part of why it works so well is because it's not advertising, which I guess says something about how we're conditioned mm -hmm. uh, to respond to advertising messages. And, of course, they're very stark. The white lettering on the black background is also yes, unusual. Yes, well, that was done on purpose, and that was done to... Um, uh, for contrast, uh, because the greater the contrast, the easier it is to see the message at a distance. So, Now, you're the one who's been receiving some of these phone calls. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> what, what have you been hearing from the public? Well, when the, the, the message originally went up around uh, March the 15th, and uh, it, the way this all worked is that it was coordinated nationally. Uh, we had uh, uh, 800 billboard companies across the United States that participated in this campaign, and I think there was about the goal was to have 10,000 messages uh, to all go up on about the same week. So ours went up uh, March the 16th. The first one was a bulletin that went up, went up on the upper deck of I-35. And I think that uh, Governor George Bush uh, actually did the unveiling of the campaign in Dallas uh, on about that same day. So we put the first bulletin out up in the air, and then the next day we have a little problem. And the little problem is, is that someone decided to crawl up on one of our structures and take out the word God out of the, uh, the vinyl. Now, the material that we hang over the board is actually vinyl, so this person used a knife or something to actually get up here and, and cut the message out. And here you see, mm -hmm. so we had to go back and repair this, and I brought this pho photograph along to give everyone an idea of the perspective of how large this message really is. This is 14 feet by 48 feet, and so this, the two little blobs you see over on the uh, side of your screen there on the little ladder is actually two of our workmen that are repairing the vinyl and the white you see is the hole that was cut out of this thing and we're putting another piece of vinyl back up that says God so uh, quite an interesting proposition. I imagine you got some calls related oh, to that. <laughs> boy do we get phone calls. We got phone calls not only because of the nature of the mess, also because of the vandalism. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess they can be divided into two separate groups, you know, the number of calls both for and against, and then the number of calls that were just, uh, uh, you know, just appalled that someone could actually do this. Um, you know, we were, I think, a little fortunate that whoever did it didn't fall off the board because that would have made more news than I think we would have cared to have had. But uh, uh, by and large, the response was very positive, and it ranged everything from little old ladies calling me up and saying, "Honey, I really support what you do. I'm really just stick in there. You, we know you. We, we love you. We'll we'll stand behind you all the way." You know, to people saying, "Well, I don't know about this. I'd like to find out who's responsible for this message." You know, so by and large, the responses were very positive, and of course, I wasn't ready for. Uh, to be the mediator in this because actually all we are is a conduit. You know, we put the campaign up, uh, we donated our advertising space for the campaign, and it was considerably expensive for us to do this. And we did it as a public service, and so I kind of instantly became the public service director, uh, a job of which I wasn't quite ready for. So, so how have you responded as, as people have called? 
Well, uh, mostly the questions have been uh, about who is this and who's responsible for this. You know, pretty much the same thing that we're talking about. And I have to say that, well, you know, it started in Florida, and the gentleman's anonymous, and you know, we're part of a campaign, and we're doing this because we think it's in, in the public interest. And really, the purpose of the campaign was to get you to think. And, you know, if I'd get a phone call, and I'd have somebody to rattle on for about 15 minutes about their own personal viewpoint of what the message is actually meant, and I'd have to say, hold on, time. You know, you, you've already, you, you've, you've, you understand what it is because you're talking about it, and that was the whole purpose of the campaign was to get you to think, and I think it's done exactly that. So. I wonder what the reaction has been around your offices, because I get the impression this is a very different campaign from other ones that you've done. Well, yes, it is. Uh, you know, as a space provider, uh, one of the things we try to do is to, uh, and I think all the media does this, is to provide uh, uh, public service messages or to air uh, messages that are in the in the public good, and. You know, we've done other things for teenage runaways and for the Humane Society, and there's a long list of things that we've done to support various organizations. Uh, this one was obviously, uh, the message was the strongest out of any that we've run in the past, and uh, uh, so consequently we got a lot more phone calls. And I think the surprising thing uh, from within the office was just how many phone calls we actually got, and I don't have a tally of that, but you know, it could have been a couple of hundred phone calls in total. And uh, the ones that really wanted to make the statements <laughs> were the ones that I received. So, and so, what are your what are your coworkers saying about the the size of the reaction or about the oh, personal reaction? Oh, you know, they were, they were they were uh, they were very very surprised, and I and I think that uh, it it did the two things it was supposed to do. It it even got them to thinking about it because there was some dialogue within the office about well, what do you think this means and what do you think that means, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, when we had our meetings to discuss. Uh, the actual messages. I mean, everybody thought it was was uh, was a great thing to do, and and, and I heard later, overheard later on, you know, the staff back in their own offices talking about the, the nature of the messages. So, hmm. I, I hope you'll have an opportunity then to report back to the uh, instigator of the campaign. Uh, However, one might well, report to an anonymous the, well, person. Maybe not the anonymous person, but at least. Um, uh, to the, the the organization that we all belong to, which is the uh, organ the Outdoor Advertising Association of America, uh, we're having a meeting here, I guess, uh, in the next couple of weeks in in Florida, oddly enough. So, I'm sure that uh, I'll hear more about this uh, uh, in the next two weeks uh, when uh, the group gathers together for their biannual meeting. So. And actually, how long is this campaign supposed to last? This in uh, 30 days. It uh, started about March 16th, and we had intended to run it uh, through the Easter weekend, which has just passed. Uh, I suspect because of the nature of the response that we received to the campaign that uh, you know, I will extend it for a while longer. And that'll be then your decision whether to extend or not? Yeah, that's going to be my decision. And I imagine we'll do another couple of weeks, or maybe a month or so. Oh, be, be ready for the phone calls then. Well, the, the initial response has already passed, and so we're still getting phone calls, though. And you may as a result of this show, too. Uh, well, you may, may very well. And we'll come back then for some more questions. I, I still have lots more questions about the campaign, and probably our, our viewers do, too. So stay with us for the second half of Austin Face Dialogue. We're glad you're still here for Austin Faith Dialogue, where we're talking today about the God Campaign, those wonderful billboards that are up around town. And the guest is Jonathan Edwards, the sales director from Reagan National Advertising. And I hope the, there's not another. No, not as far as we know. Um, I, I'm interested to know if there is any particular reason why 
you said yes to this campaign? Did it, did it have to do with your sense of the public good? Perhaps is there some sense of um, your own faith commitment being expressed that way? Well, I think I was more, uh, I, I was in, intrigued with the nature of the message because the message is plural, actually. There's, there's 18 of them, like I said earlier. The messages uh, were thought-provoking. And to me, I, I think that's something that it's, it's good for all of us to do is to take a moment and stop and think about who we are as individuals and uh, where we stand in this great big old world. Um, now, obviously, uh, the organization that I work with is not a, a political organization and we don't have any religious affiliation. Uh, and the reason we did this is because we thought that the message, as I said earlier, was unique, uh, charming, and thought-provoking. And uh, of all the campaigns I think we've seen, this has been one of the strongest ones. Um, and I, th I think because of that, uh, that's one of the reasons why you know, I decided that we needed to do this. So. Have you noticed any difference as a result of, of doing this God campaign in the way that you now do business with some of your other clients? Oh gosh, I don't know if it's changed any. Um, you know, perhaps their perception of us as an organization may have changed a little bit. Uh, I mean, to be certain, uh, the nature of the message is strong enough uh, that the uh, the, the the religious community, I think, would have a strong reaction to it. And, and we've had a lot of very positive feedback from um, a number of the ministries and lots of individuals about the nature of the campaign. And they're really glad to see somebody do something different. Uh, so if, if there is a change, it may be from how, you know, maybe some other businesses see us, you know, and they recognize that we made a contribution uh, for dialogue. Uh, within the community, and I think that they appreciate that. Uh, and you know, maybe we might see some extra business out of it. I don't know. You know, we might see some of the churches uh, think about how they uh, look to reach to uh, their potential potential constituents, and um, you know, they may decide that uh, uh, that because of the success of the God campaign and how it was utilized, that maybe they would want to try the same thing too. So. And that will be new for, for many people in the religious community, I imagine. I, the religious community has not advertised as much as some other professions. So I wonder if you, as, uh, as an advertising professional, could talk a little bit about how you see the religious community being able to use public advertising, public promotion, a little bit more effectively. Well, just me personally, uh, you know, I've, we've never talked about my background, but I've been in the media business uh, Oh, she's 25, 28 years, and I've been both on the, the broadcast side uh, in radio and television. I didn't tell you that, and uh, uh, also uh, advertising agencies, agency work. And and really, one of the things I think that uh, this campaign shows is how to use <laughs> uh, God as a brand name. And um, here, one of the things that's worked for this is that we treated. Uh, the message as a brand, and we've used conventional uh, advertising resources to develop brand awareness. Uh, now, this may seem as a foreign concept, maybe to uh, others in the religious community, but th the fact is is that uh, the ministries can do similar kinds of approaches to achieve the same kinds of results. And I, you know, we live in such a cluttered world uh, from an advertising perspective. Uh, you know, we're bombarded with advertising messages uh, all day long from all different directions, and uh, it's it's difficult for a business uh, or even a, a packaged good company to do, develop awareness for who they are uh, as a company. Uh, and so, developing brand awareness is, is a very important thing for any advertiser to do. And this usage of the God campaign and outdoor was a good example of how to creatively rethink the way you present uh, a particular message to uh, reach a group of consumers. So if a local church, a synagogue, a faith group, whatever, was going to develop some brand awareness, what are some steps that they might take? Well, uh, advertising uh, uh, their name is, is certainly one thing, and having something specific to advertise. A couple of examples, uh, we just recently uh, completed a campaign for um, Oh gosh, I'm going to forget the name of the ministry, but uh, they had a uh, Easter 
uh, pageant uh, play that they were going to be doing in the church and uh, uh, apparently it was a fairly large organization and uh, they had available oh, hundreds and hundreds of seats for this particular presentation. Uh, they ran one bulletin on the upper deck of IH-35, which is where this other bulletin you saw earlier was located at, and apparently they started receiving phone calls within uh, a few hours of the board going up uh, for people wanting to order tickets for this particular presentation. And th there was a phone number that was on uh, the right-hand side of the board, so it really, the only, and apparently it was the only place they'd advertise, the church to advertise for this thing. So, you know, apparently people have been driving down IH-35, and with uh, the rather cosmic proliferation of, proliferation of cell phones, you know, they saw the phone number, and they called them immediately and said, gee, I want a ticket for this. So, so here was a way for a church to develop some kind of brand awareness. They had a, a particular campaign, and they presented the campaign in a certain way, and they tried a little bit different kind of approach uh, for marketing the campaign. And they had uh, apparently smashing success, at it, and apparently they sold the, the number of the seats out within, uh, within a week or two. So. so perhaps thinking in different directions and not assuming, say, that something large and public like a billboard is out of financial reach. Yes, and... Uh, you know, I, I think here they, they used uh, uh, our particular media as, as a way to reach a, a large number of people uh, in a very short time period. Now, you know, of course, I think the churches use uh, television and they also use radio as well, too. But I think the message here I have is that um, uh, you don't have to use the, the conventional thought process uh, to create awareness for who you are as an organization. And maybe what you should do is uh, start thinking about how uh, a brand develops awareness for what it is, whether it's a Pepsi or a Coke, or you know, and all of those uh, brands are very, very, very identifiable. But they advertise in a different way. So if you think a little bit differently and use a little bit different uh, creative approach, uh, maybe there's a chance for success here for your particular ministry. So. And am I correct that the package would include not only name, but some sort of graphic identity and some message targeted to a particular segment of the population yeah, as you build that, brand that, awareness? Yeah, sure, sure, absolutely. So get with your advertising agency and they'll tell you, you know, exactly how to do it. So. And if a, a church doesn't have one, perhaps that's a new Oh, there's plenty of advertising agencies in this community, so I'm sure you can find one somewhere. I wonder if you've heard from any critics who have said that the church should not be advertising, not even doing this God campaign, and, and if so, how you've responded to that kind of Well, there, uh, I, to be sure, we did have some negative response, and... Uh, why someone would respond negatively to the nature of the messages, I think, is purely a personal thing. Um, it, the, the nature of the messages produced, I think, uh, uh, rather strong responses in, in most everyone because it, it's different and it, and it reaches right mm -hmm. to the core of, of, of you as an individual. And, and, and some people took offense at that. And, and to be sure, we received a number of negative calls. And, you know, my response to uh, the callers was that, well, you know, the nature of the campaign was to get you to think, and, you know, really, we're just the messenger here, so don't come looking for me as being the bad guy. But uh, if it got you to thinking and you picked up the phone and called me, then don't you think it did something? You know, didn't it work? And uh, to my mind, apparently it did. So, Is there a, a God campaign part two? Perhaps? Not that I'm aware of. I, uh, I mean, I don't know how you could top this, <laughs> to be quite honest. You know, maybe the thing is, is you run it again with a different set of messages in another year. But, um, uh, you know, I, I think it would be impossible to duplicate the success of this. But who knows? You know, anything can happen. So. And if you had been actually designing this campaign, is there something you would have done differently? Oh, gosh, no. I, I don't, you know, it, it was so perfectly executed. This is one of those uh, campaigns that... Uh, uh, was so well done, so well conceived, and so simple uh, that it would be very hard for me or anyone, I think, to design anything much better. Different, maybe, but not much better. As I read the messages, I think, of course, this, this is so obvious. I'm surprised that folks didn't think of it ahead of time. We've got uh, print media, broadcast media, um, public outdoor media like yours. Are there other mediums that churches should be exploring that, that they're not currently? Well, 
I think you'd best leave that up to your advertising professional. You know, and maybe the you know, the great world of the internet is uh, is the next direction. I, I would guess. And what advice do you have for a church uh, that might be going to look for someone to help them with their advertising? What kinds of questions do they need to ask? Well, I, I think uh, uh, a, a good some good a good set of questions that you would need to ask as an organization is is what is our goal and what are we trying to achieve? And as surprisingly simple as that uh, statement sounds, it's ex incredibly uh, difficult to do because you have to boil down the very essence of what it is that you are trying to achieve down to its most simplest elements and that actually takes a lot of thinking to be able to do that uh, and surprisingly you know using our media the outdoor media one of the things is it forces you to do is to think of a, a, a clever headline that conveys uh, everything that you want to say uh, in, a, in a very short time period and and that's kind of the approach that you need to take with your uh, your marketing is to come up with uh, uh, a very clear idea of who who you are and what you want to achieve, and then you can take that to an organization and say, hey, you know, here, here's what we want to do. Uh, tell us the, the most expedient way to do it within our budget. You know, it sounds so simple, but it's difficult. We have one picture that we haven't looked at oh, already. What's this? It's it's one of the other billboards. Uh, oh, this is one of my favorites. I like this one. Keep using my <laughs> name in vain and I'll make your rush hour longer. <laughs> I, I wanted folks to see this again as just such a wonderful example of a message that we all get and that is so simple and yet causes of folks to call. Absolutely. Causes, causes people to and think. I, and I actually got a, a number of calls just because of that particular board. So. Maybe people's rush hour was longer on those days simply because they were stopping to read well, the billboard. Well, the comment I got was, he must be malevolent. Why would he do that? <laughs> <laughs> and your answer was? Well, uh, that's, that's up to you. <laughs> do you have any other favorites off, off the list? Uh, other favorites off the, off the list. Uh, let's see. We Need to Talk. I think that's one that was on there. Uh, I love the wedding. Invite me to the marriage. Now, there's, there's one that will get you to think. And unfortunately... Uh, that one didn't run in this market. So. so I'm glad we had a chance for you to read it, at least, so people could hear that. And maybe they'll see it in other markets, too. Maybe so. Well, Jonathan, thanks so much for talking about the God campaign and the whole approach to advertising, to promotion in religion, which is so important. We'll, uh, we'll see what other calls you get, too, Great. Thank at you the so office. Much. Thank you for joining us as we talked about the God campaign. We'll look forward to seeing you next week on Austin Faith Dialogues.